Uh, Dr. Marwan, tell me how all of this innovation here in Dubai uh, affects the rest of the world. Um, obviously, we're right here in Africa, three billion citizens there, many of them not connected. How does all the work you're doing here affect them or how does that vision go out to the world? Uh, first, uh, like I mentioned before, Dubai is an area of hope. A lot of jobs actually created in Dubai employ a lot of people in other regions, uh, especially in the Arab world and the Muslim world, uh, that's as our neighborhood, literally. So a lot of uh, jobs also that the firms are actually based in Dubai, the coders actually based in India, Egypt, Jordan, uh, Morocco, Saudi even, uh, and the whole region actually benefits from whatever Dubai is doing here. Uh, when it comes to things like connectivity and banking the unbanked or underbanked people in Africa, in Dubai there's a number of projects that are actually catering for that. Dubai is the springboard or the launch pad for a lot of projects that are actually in Africa. A lot of the Afri African countries' leadership actually comes to Dubai to look for technology and partners to improve their ecosystems, when it, whether it is for hardware, software, coding, uh, you know, even for strategy and leadership. It is always uh, Dubai is the focal point for them and also the meeting place. A lot of times you see, even here in Jitex today, you see a lot of un uh, African subcontinent uh, technology, uh, you know, uh, companies as well as politicians and government uh, heads come to Dubai to seek for this kind of uh, learning as well as uh, actual solutions uh, from Dubai. Mm. And how is that, do you think, going to translate into technology, innovation, blockchain into Africa? What do you see the future? What is the some of the most pressing issues right now for that massive population? I think one of one of the and, and this was a shock to me uh, uh, before I met uh, uh, a very prominent African figure uh, in one of the environmental uh, events here in Dubai, and she told me actually I told her what's stopping you from uh, blockchain adoption, and she's like power, we don't even have power. I was like what? It's not connectivity, it's not digitization. She said no 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 no, we don't even have power. How can you have a digital lifestyle if we don't have power? So power is first and foremost. Second is actually connectivity and then skills and empowerment and all the stuff. Mobile is easy, it's intuitive, right? But to have the actual power generation and then after that connectivity and then you will have all the stuff coming as, as, a, as a, not first priority, by the way. People's life will improve way before they get to the perks of technology like the internet and others. Even con contacting somebody over the phone will be better. A fridge to keep your fish well, versus, you know, throwing it off, over uh, every day because it's rotted. Uh, it's, it's important. All the light at night in your house so you can read for a couple of hours more is important. All these things are very small improvements, but all of them contribute to your lifestyle and improve how you learn about the world. And this is what is life changing. And, and literally, we need to build the fundamentals first before you look at things like uh, blockchain. Okay. Now, Dr. Marwan, you're a man of the world. You spent five years in America, five years in Australia. You know, you like to do things in fives. Um, when you look at, you know, the Western world or other countries around the world, what do you see that they're doing right in blockchain or even digital development? And what are the things you think they maybe can improve on? What can they learn from Dubai? What could Dubai learn from them? I think one of the things that a lot of people misunderstand about uh, emerging tech is adoption. They need to really jump in and take a chance. A lot of people were doubting Bitcoin when it first came out. Uh, even here, we were doubting blockchain when it came out. We did not see the value of it, right? It, you need to be fast. You need to act fast. You need to bring in the right people to help you move faster. If you don't, speed is uh, of the essence. Don't take 10, 20, 30 years to understand the technology. Understand the value take from the beginning. Understand it well enough this superficial kind of scratching the surface of every other technology and say, oh, no, no, I understand what blockchain is. No, it's not, it's not how it works. Dig deep, go deep. I spent a month and a half just to understand blockchain. And Bitcoin, one use case. Imagine, you owe it to yourself to do that. Okay. The greedy bankers are about to do it again. In 2008, they crashed our financial system and nearly bankrupted the entire global economy. Then they received trillions of dollars in government bailouts. And after, 
They demanded fat bonuses paid for by you, the taxpayer. It turns out the banks haven't just been screwing the American taxpayers, they're also screwing over their investors. Turns out uh, the banking industry is the worst place you could put your money, despite enormous taxpayer bailouts. Now the bankers are back to take away your financial freedom. They lie and tell you that cryptocurrency isn't safe. They try to make it illegal for you to choose how to invest your hard-earned money. They lie and say cryptocurrency is used by money launderers and criminals. But look at the record. It's the banks themselves that launder hundreds of billions of dollars every year to the biggest criminal operations in the world. Leaked documents have revealed how some UK banks have helped criminals, money launderers and Russians under sanctions. American authorities discovered that the Sinaloa cartel moved $881 million through HSBC accounts as bank officials turned a blind eye to the illegality. The bankers lie and say cryptocurrency is not a real investment. Meanwhile, the smartest CEOs in the world are buying billions and billions of it. The truth is that banks lie about cryptocurrency because it makes them scared. The banks take $9 trillion per year of your hard-earned money, and they are worried that they will finally be exposed. They're scared because crypto means they can no longer control your money, which means they can no longer control you. They are scared because you might actually understand your money and intelligently decide what to do with it. Now is the time for us to come together, fight back, and take control. It's time to educate ourselves, our families, and our communities. Because financial education means financial freedom. We know that cryptocurrencies will help us build the new decentralized financial system of the future. A banking system that is of the people, by the people, and for the people. A banking system where access to finance is a fundamental human right. A banking system that is free and fair and welcomes all humans on this earth. The DeFi revolution is happening. We, the people, can no longer be fooled. We choose to take control of our finances. We choose to take control of our freedom. We choose to take control of our future. Join us and let's take back our financial freedom forever.